D365 is our home, and a clean home is a happy home. What's up, everybody? Mel coming at you again with Sunrise Compass. During the usage of D365, you can accumulate a lot of data in the tables that support the system. And if you just leave that data sitting there, then your house is going to get dirty quick. So let's talk to two of our technical fellows, Michael Stashwick and Rizwan Ahmed, to find out how they keep that house clean. Hey, you two. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you're doing well. I'm good, man. How are you? Hey, Mal. How's it going? So let's talk D365 cleanup. But first, tell me why this topic is important for everyone to know about. The way I see it is we're now getting into this... Um, more mature part of our relationship with D365, the honeymoon's over. You know, when we all went out on our first date, Microsoft was like, I would never throttle you. You can just leave your junk here. You don't have to pick it up. And now that it's been a couple years, you know, everyone's starting to realize, hey, if we're going to do this long term, we need to get some house rules in. You run some batch jobs and you got to clean up that history. You can't just leave it there. So is this more about the storage of data and the resulting costs, or does this affect the performance of D365 as well? It is performance as well, because it adds even a millisecond uh, for each request adds to the overall you know, performance of that whole function. So it helps uh, to have the size to a, like a, a you know, usable, uh, you can say, limit in there. Total storage is definitely a concern. Um, Every D365 instance has a database limit size of four terabytes per Azure SQL. And if you get an email notification saying that your batch job history table is taking up eight, 900 meg, that's almost a quarter of your entire available space. Like you should not be spending 20, 25% of your SQL storage on logging, batch history, uh, DMF logs, all of that, that should be used for more important um, business critical data. How does one divide and conquer this cleanup? I think when it comes to out of the box, Microsoft gives you the tools, you just have to use them. There are out of the box cleanup jobs for DMF purging and batch history purging. On tables, there's delete actions so that when you delete a record, if you attached a document file to it, it will get cascade deleted. The big thing comes with how do we support this with our own extensions? Every TechArc, if you create a new table, if you know uh, someone's going to attach documents to it, you need to write code so those documents get deleted and not just orphaned and taking up space. Um, if you have integration tables, you need to clean those up. Okay, so when I'm writing an extension spec, what questions should I be asking myself about cleaning up the data in those extended tables? Challenging the solution, right? So the consultants can come in and say, oh, I want this, I want this field, this, this data needs to live, and I'm like gonna report on this data. But the thing is challenging the solution they come up with, making sure that they're not residing on a data element or a structure which is already available in D365. Because the other thing is we need to make sure that we don't duplicate the data. And that will also save you cost and the you know size on the DB as well. So when is the best time to start thinking about data cleanup? That is like continual process, just technical folks plus the functional folks have to have this question in mind saying, okay, we are ingesting this data in. How much time is the better time to you know sustain it or keep it in system? Otherwise, take it up. If you keep this as a regular question in your meetings, people will start understanding that it will be given like, okay, this integration is going to come in, Riz or Stash is going to ask the same question again and again. Don't shy away from it. It's the same question, repeat, rinse and repeat. And people, your customer, by the time you go live, they already know. Don't do it in like last CRP. It will be a shocker for them, especially on their IT side, right? Because they, those are the guys business people come to like to ask questions. So they need to be on board. So in my opinion, start as soon as you can and make sure your second last or last CRP has those jobs running. I would probably go to second last even. Okay, so we get why data cleanup is important, 
but can you help us understand how to evaluate those tables? How do we know what data to keep once we've ID'd those culprit tables? Finding is easy. Like any anybody can go, like technical side, they can go into DB and just find the data. There are queries out there. There's a SQL custom report that you can use and see like your top 20 or and top 100 tables or 10 tables. And you can find that out. That part is, should not be a problem. The second part is which data. It all depends your area. I totally agree. Just think about it like cleaning up your kitchen. What's more manageable? One cereal bowl in the sink or a week's worth or a year's worth of dirty cereal bowls in the sink, right? And they get all like crusty and build up. Like it's, you want to do it as you go. If you wait for it to become a mess, it'll be much harder and much more burdensome to clean up. So as you go, like Riz said, is absolutely key. What are some of the biggest offender tables that you see? Batch history table, number one, batch history. <laughs> Everyone's gotten that email. I'd say logging tables probably come in after that, especially a lot of tax ISVs or any ISV that makes real-time service calls. They have logging functionality that they'll say you're not supposed to leave on in prod long-term, but the reality is sometimes you need to anyway, and those logging tables can be very large and clunky. Okay, so any final thoughts from the both of you? Be more disciplined. Purge your, purge your data, do better. Ask these questions from the start. Do not shy away from it. And nothing bad will happen by asking these questions. Actually, people will respect you that you're asking these questions now. Like, don't think that if you don't do it, nobody's gonna ask you the question because at the end of the day, as a team, if data lives in the database and client gets, client is gonna get billed for it, like the team or the support is going to come back to you saying, okay, you designed this table, why there is no purging on it? And either you will, at that time, you will say, oh, I forgot, or you should have a proper reasoning around it. Oh man, lots of great information from Stash and Riz. Those guys have seen it all. Keeping your D365 house in order is all about starting that cleanup conversation and the process early and repeating that cleanup often. All right, join us next time on Sunrise Compass. See you later.